What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to introduce you to the fascinating world of flavor concentration. The possibilities this technique offers are incredible. And the best part is you likely have everything to make this at home already. Unless you're planning on going full on geek mode, it's as easy as making a batch of clear ice. So if you're ready, let's dive into what this is, how to do it and how to get creative with this awesome technique. Let's go. All right, so we will focus today on a concentration method that revolves around freezing. This technique has been around for ages, you know. In the Scandinavian culture, they used to make their ice beer like that. And the settlers in America used to make their cider stronger in ABV using the same technique before they had access to distillation. There's a couple of different terms that refer to this process, and you probably heard some already, like the cryo concentration or the freeze concentration that usually refer to the juice production. And then there's the freeze distillation and the jacking process, they usually refer to the alcohol production. And fun fact, for years I thought that the apple jack was actually referring to the famous whiskey company, Jack Daniel, but because it was made out of apple, they called it the apple jack. But that's not it. It's actually because they were using the jacking process to boost the ABV in their cider to make something stronger, hence the name, the apple jack. Now, for years, this practice was pretty much reserved to bootleggers who didn't have access to distillation or the industrial in the juice industry. But recently, Jan McPherson from Panda & Son, who's also responsible for multiple other cool techniques, no pun intended, introduced us to the switching, which consists in freezing foolproof spirit at a very low temperature to separate the water from the ethanol. Then you take, for example, the water from a peated scotch, introduce it to a concentration traded gin to give the gin a peated flavor. And then to bring back the original ABV of the scotch, you can add anything you want, like when he did it with clarified watermelon juice. Unfortunately, this concept, while being very interesting, is pretty unapproachable because having access to a freezing device that can reach that low of a temperature to freeze foolproof spirit is completely out of reach for home bartenders. But when using lower proof liquors, it gets way more accessible and equally interesting so today I'm going to show you how this works, making a concentrated and modified Aperol so you can use it in a Negroni, like in a proper Negroni. I know those who don't like Campari tend to use Aperol in their Negronis and in my opinion, this yields a very unbalanced cocktail. So we're going to use the jacking method to transform the Aperol into a real substitute to Campari and I'm telling you, you Campari and Negroni fans, you will love this as well. That said, there's also plenty other applications to this method, but they all require some small tweaks in the process. For example, you can use a bar spoon of concentrated phenol sherry to add acidity to a cocktail, a little bit of concentrated sweet vermouth in replacement of sugar in an old fashioned. There's plenty different applications. And one of them that I absolutely love is to use the switching to transform a Campari into a pineapple Campari for the best tropical Negroni. But as I said, this is made slightly differently than what I'm about to show you. So if you want to know how to make that pineapple Campari, you will have to prove it to me. If this video gets to 20,000 views within its first week of publication, that will be the next video I'm gonna shoot. So like, comment, watch the video till the end, all the good stuff to boost the algorithm, but most importantly, share it on your socials, Facebook, Reddit, etc. just to make sure we get the view count. So now, the recipe. All right, so for the equipment, like I said, it's gonna be very simple. All you need is this one thing, an insulated container. This is an insulated coffee mug and it works great for small batches like I'm gonna to do today. But if you wanna make a large batch of this, you can also use your camping cooler like when you do a batch of clear ice. Then if you wanna go a little bit all out, if you wanna take this to another level like I did, you can use a refractometer. This is a device that calculates the bricks in your solution. And it's gonna be very helpful if you wanna make your own experiments or if you want to make sure to have consistent batches. But as I said, it is optional. If you're here today just to try my recipe, forget about this and just follow my lead. So now, as I can fit up to 700 mils in my container, that's the batch I'm going to make today. But if you have a smaller or a bigger container, really that's not going to make a difference at all because we're going to use ratios for our measurements. So for the first step, all we need is to measure 700 mils of Aperol and simply dump it in our container. 
Then we're gonna place this in the freezer for 24 hours. While this is freezing, we're gonna prepare something special that we're gonna use after to boost the flavor and ABV of our concentrated Aperol so we can use it in a proper Negroni. We're gonna make a jasmine and gentian infused vodka. In a small container, all you need is to add 100 ml of vodka, 7 grams of quality jasmine tea, and 0.5 grams of gentian root. You're gonna close the lid, give it a little shake, and leave that infusing at room temperature for two hours. Then you're simply gonna strain this through a coffee filter and bottle it until we're ready to finish the concentrated Aperol. Now let's get back to our jacked Aperol. After 24 hours in the freezer, it's time to take it out. The upper part is gonna be frozen, but since we use directional freezing, we're still gonna have unfrozen Aperol at the bottom. So we're simply gonna filter this all at once, throwing this in a bowl over a fine mesh strainer. The part of the Aperol that's not frozen should be less than the half. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave the frozen part melt until you collected exactly half of what you added initially. In my case today, it's 300. And 50 mils. As soon as you reach that mark, you're gonna take what's left frozen and you're gonna leave it melting in a separated container. But we need to take this further, so we're gonna redo this process with each batches separately. So in your insulated container, you're gonna add on one side your concentrated Aperol, on the other one your lighter Aperol, and you're gonna place that once again in the freezer for 24 hours. At this point, this is when things get a little bit different. The whole point of this technique is to concentrate the liquor by extracting some of its water. So with the batch that we had that was more concentrated, we're gonna yield more liquor. And with the other one that was lighter, we're gonna yield more water. So again, we're still gonna filter it the same way through a fine mesh strainer over a bowl. But for the concentrated batch, we're gonna stop collecting as soon as we get 75% of what we started with. In this case, since we started with three 350 mils, we're gonna stop collecting at 262.5 mils. For the second one, the lighter one, we're gonna stop collecting as soon as we get 35% of what we started with. Again, for my recipe today, that's gonna be 122.5 mils. The reason why I stopped collecting the Aperol at this volume is because, keep in mind, the whole point of this technique is to concentrate the flavor of a liquor by extracting water from it. And the freezing point of alcohol while being much lower than water, on the opposite, it also melts much faster than water. And it's the same thing for sugar, which can be calculated with our refractometer. So at first we get more alcohol, more sugar, and more flavor. And then little by little, we get more water incorporated. So in the beginning, the bricks of the liquid that was dripping was much higher. And then little by little, it was decreasing. And as soon as I hit the 32 mark, I stopped collecting. Why this number? It's because my goal here is to get something that's closer to Campari in terms of ABV and intensity of flavor. And because the Campari is a bricks of 32, I didn't want to have anything that was lower than that. But as I said, you don't need to make all these calculations yourself if all you want is to replicate the recipe today. All you need is to follow the percentage cuts that we've made before. But if you want to create something of your own using this technique, I highly recommend the refractometer. This will really help you to determine when to make your cuts. Speaking of which, now we have four different cuts and as you can see they all have a different volume and what's very interesting is both lighter cuts while having a completely different volume they both have the exact same bricks 16. So you can trust me when I say that sugar and alcohol melts faster than water. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix both concentrated cuts together and both lighter cuts together. Now before we move on and finish that app roll, don't throw away the lighter cut. There's still a little bit of flavor in there, still a little bit of alcohol as well, so it can make for a great cocktail ingredient and even better for low ABV drink. So make sure to stay till the end if you want to know what to do with this. But now, let's finish our app roll. We have one more thing to do and it's very straightforward. We need to add our vodka to our app roll in order to boost the ABV and flavor profile of it and we're gonna add 90 mils of it. We used 100 mils for the infusion just to make sure we would still have enough after the filtration because tea tends to swallow some of the vodka. Now all we have to do left is to bottle it up and this is how we make the perfect Aperol for a Negroni. Now let's give it a try.
So right up front, we get so much more flavor in this than we do in the original April. The flavors are really concentrated. And also because of that, we get much more body and mouthfeel, which is very interesting and kind of required, in my opinion, if we want to use this in a Negroni. Now, it's a little bit hard for me to say exactly what the ABV is because I don't have a hydrometer, but according to my math, it is close to 25%, which is the goal because we want to have something that's closer to Campari. And we also have more bitterness because of the added gentian. The jasmine notes go really nicely in the Aperol. Overall, it makes a great new liquor that's very different yet similar to the Aperol, but much more suitable for a Negroni. Then what's really, really cool about this and what makes the whole point of this whole thing is if we would have wanted to up the ABV of Aperol simply by adding infused vodka like we did, we would dilute the flavor and the sugar content of it. The sugar is really easy to add afterward, but the flavor, the original flavor of the Aperol, it's kind of impossible. But that way, because we use such a concentrated Aperol and then brought it halfway back up in terms of dilution with uh, infused vodka to up the ABV, we didn't lose flavor at all. Actually, we gained some flavor because this is still more concentrated than the original Aperol. The ABV is higher. We have a little more layers of flavors. We have a tad bit more of bitterness. So it makes a great substitute for Campari in a Negroni. Speaking of which, it's time we give it a shot. We're gonna start in our mixing glass with a classic one ounce of gin, one ounce of our boosted Aperol, and one ounce of sweet vermouth. We're gonna stir over ice for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna strain this over a beautiful block of clear ice in a rocks glass, and garnish this with an expressed harsh zest. That's so much better than with just regular Aperol. For me, a Negroni with Aperol is way too sweet. And by the way, fun fact, did you know that Aperol has less sugar per liter than Campari? It's just that Campari is so much more bitter and you feel it's drier, but it has more sugar. But now this modified Aperol, it's literally the best of both worlds. People who don't like Campari can enjoy a balanced Negroni and people who love Campari can try a different style of Negroni with Aperol without it being too sweet. So I think it is fantastic. So now if you guys remember, I told you we would make something out of that lighter cuts before, so it's time we make it. So as I said, this very light Aperol still has some flavor and ABV, but very little. So right off the bat, we could just carbonate this and use it as a sparkling water to top whatever cocktail that you feel would go well with the flavor profile of Aperol. But personally, there's one thing I like to do even more than that, and it's to transform it into an acid solution in replacement of lime or lemon in my cocktails. So it's very easy to make. All you need to do is to lower the bricks a little bit of that. This is at 16, so in order to reach something that's a little bit closer than lime, we're gonna add 200 mils of water for every 300 mils of light Aperol. And then we're gonna add 2% of malic acid, and 4% of citric acid. Then we're simply gonna stir until dissolve and use it as our lime in our favorite cocktail. One I love to do is a low ABV mezcal eyeball using one ounce of it, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of mezcal, just a pinch of salt, top it with soda water, garnish with an orange zest, and there you have it, an extremely tasty and very low ABV mezcal highball. Cheers. <clears throat> This is legit one of the best low ABV that I've made. First, I love to use mezcal in a low ABV cocktail because it is such a powerful spirit. You don't need a lot to have the feeling you're having a foolproof cocktail. And then that acid solution with a backbone flavor of Aperol just goes marvelously with the mezcal. It is super simple, extremely tasty and low ABV. I love it. So before I let you go today, my friends, I would like to talk a little bit about the Patreons. I'm still making the eBooks every month. On every last Saturday of the month, I release an eBook that includes all the recipes that we've made on the channel that month. So a little warning for those of you who are planning on subscribing to the Patreon, which I would really appreciate if you do. If you are subscribing, for example, one month, or two or six or 10 months after I released a video and you're hoping to get the ebook including the recipe of the cocktail that I talked in the video that made you subscribe to the Patreon, that's probably not the one that you're gonna get because 
You're Too Late. The ebook that's available to you or the ebooks that are available to you are the ones from the date you subscribe and so on. So if you want to have some that were released before your application date, you still can get them though. You just need to go to the boutique section and purchase the ebook one by one or a la carte, if you will. You can always see if you click on the ebook in the boutique section, what's included in that ebook. So you can find the one that you're looking for if it was released before your application date. So all that being said, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe before you go to turn that bell if you wanna make sure not to miss the next one. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon.